We continue now at the top of Daf Zayin Amid Beis Meseches Nedarim. This is Nedarim Daf Seven B. The Gemara continues. Bimeduna Anilach. The machlokus between the Rabbanon and Rabbi Akiva is specifically when the person uses a language of Menuda, and that's where Rabbi Akiva is strict and says it's a language of a neder. It's a language of prohibiting himself upon the items of, of his fellow. And uh, the Rabbanon say it's not an issue. The Rabbi Akiva Savar Lishna Diniduyahu, because Rabbi Akiva says that's a language of Niduya, like we said on the previous Amid Niduya, which means distancing. That already is more of a language that everybody agrees is a language of Isra, a language of prohibition. Rabbanon Savri, but the Rabbanon hold no, Lishna de Mishamtana, who it's a language of Mishamtana, which is more of a language of excommunication. That would not be a language that would be used if somebody wanted to prohibit it, the items of his friend upon himself. And so, therefore, again, that's the machlokas between Rabbi Akiva and the Rabbanon by the term Menuda. Is that more like Niduya and it would be Asr, or is that more like Mishamtana and it would be Mutter? But the Gemara continues that this approach it argues on Rav Chista. There was an individual who said the language of Mishamtana in terms of the property of the son of Rav Yirmiya Baraba. And the question was whether that was a language of prohibition or not. Was he prohibiting himself upon that property or not? So he came before Rav Chista. And the response was, he said to him, Nobody is concerned with Rav Yakiva's uh, stringent over here. And this was a language of Mishamtana. So you see that Rav Chista Kasavar, you see that Rav Chista holds the Mishamtana Pligi, that Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva and the Rabbonon are actually arguing about the language of Mishamtana. Again, on the previous summit we suggested that everybody agrees Mishamtana is Mutter, but here in Rav Chista's approach you see that by Mishamtana it actually is a Machlokas Tanoim. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Law, Amar Rav. Rabbi Law says, it says that Rav says, Nido of Let's say a person is excommunicated, and let's say they excommunicate this person or they ostracize this individual in front of him, meaning the person is right in front of us. And the Mefarish says over here, Nido Bifanav, Chacham Shen Nido Esa Adam Bifanav. Let's say a Chacham, a Tamil Chacham, excommunicates or ostracizes somebody, puts a person in Nido, and it's in front of the person. The person is there, is present at the time that he is put into Nido. Ein Yachol Hatter Lo Ela Bifanav. So the halacha is, if you want to undo that nidoi, the person also has to be present. He has to be there. Nido befonov, ein matirin lo elo befonov. If the person is put in nidoi in front of, in, in his own presence, so then when you undo the nidoi, that person has to be present as well. Nido shalo befonov. Now, if you put the person in nidoi when he's not present, if he's not present in front of the chacham at the time of the nidoi, so matirin lo bein befonov, bein shalo befonov. Then the halach is if you undo the nidoi, that can be whether he is present or whether he is not present. Amar Rav Chanin, Amar Rav, Rav Chanin says that Rav says, Hashomea has karas Hashem mipicha veru. Let's say somebody hears somebody else. He hears his friend saying the name of, of Hashem in vain. Tzarech linadoso. So if you hear that, you have to put him into nidoy. Ve'iloni day, when if you don't put him into nidoy, hu atzmo yehei benidoy, then he himself, the one who heard it and didn't take action, he himself should be put into nidoy. Shekal makam shaz karas Hashem mitsuya, because in any area where the mentioning of Hashem's name in vain is, is common, sham anius mitsuya. That's where we find poverty, meaning to say that is an issue which will cause poverty. The Aniyas Kamisa and poverty is like death, meaning to say it's a very serious issue, and that's why it is deserving of Nidoy. Shanemra, like the Pasuk says, Kimesu Kalo Anoshim. It says that all the men died. And the Mefarish over here explains, first of all, Haskaras Hashem Shemotzi Shem Shamaim Levatola. It means you say the name of heaven, but you say it in vain. Shenemar Kimesu Kalo Anoshim, Varmin and Hainu Dosan Vaviram. That Pasuk is talking about the fact that it's reporting that Dosan and Aviram had died, but they didn't actually die. Shenaf Lubanias, it really means they became poor. You see that there's this comparison between death and becoming poor. Vitanya, we learned in Abraisa, also another comparison between the two. Kalmakam Shenosnu Chachamim Eneim, anywhere where the Chachamim turned their eyes against that individual or that community, o misa o oni. It means to say that either it's going to bring death or it's going to bring poverty. And so again, you see the same basic idea. Mefarish says, Kalmakam shenasnu chacham eneim lo adam shenidu o meis o nofa banias. Means the chachamim turn their attention to somebody and they put that person in nidoi. There's going to be either death or there's going to be poverty. V'yahachit tzarech lenado. So and that's why it's necessary to put the person in nidoi. Kedei sheyipol banias. Dehaino kamisa. In order that the person should become poor, which is the same thing as death. So again, same basic idea. Idea, the poverty and the death are associated, and this kind of a person who's deserving of Nidui, really what we're saying is that person should become poor, uh, because again, Anius is similar to Misa. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba says, Hava ko'imno kamei de Rav Huna, I was standing before Rav Huna, Shamal hach itasa da apko has karas Hashem levatola. So I, I heard that this particular woman, so she, she said the name of Hashem, she said it in vain. 
So Shamta, so he he put her into Nidui, Vishara and then he immediately permitted, he took her out of Nidui right in her presence. And the Gemara says, Shmamina Tala Shmamina. You see from this incident three things, the following. First of all, you see Hashomeh Haskar is Hashem, Mipichaver, or Tsarachlanadoso. The first Shmamina is if a person hears the name of Hashem said in vain from his friend, so then you have to put him into Nidui. Ushmaminon, you also see, Nido Bifana Vain Matir and Loyal Bifana, that if a Nidui is done in the person's presence, like in this case it was done in the presence of the lady, so you have to undo it in their presence as well. Ushmaminon, you also see from here, Ain Bain Nidui Lahafar, there is no time between. Between putting a person in Nidoy and undoing the Nidoy, there's no amount of time at all. It could be immediately after. You can put the person into Nidoy and then immediately take them out of Nidoy. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Gidl, Amar Rav. Rav Gidl says that Rav says, Talmud Chacham menadel atzmo umefer li atzmo. A Talmud Chacham put, can put himself into Nidoy and can take himself out of Nidoy. And the Gemara says, Pshita, it's obvious. And the Gemara says, No, Ma'u de Tema, what might you have thought? Ein chavish matir atzmo, mi beis asur, and somebody who's in prison can't take himself out of the prison. Kamash and that's what we're teaching you over here, that the person can take himself out of Nidoy. Hey, Chidami, what's the case? So what would be an example of a person putting himself into Nidoy? Ki marzutra chasida, ki mechaiv bar Rav Shamta. It's like the story with Marzutra Chasida. If one of the students of the base Medrash was deserving of excommunication, Meshamit Nafshe Beresha. First, he would put himself into excommunication. Bahadur Meshamit Bar Rav. And only after that would he put the the student into excommunication. Vechiyaya Lebeze. And then when he went to his house, Shari Lenafshe, he'd undo his own uh, excommunication. Vahadur Shari Le. And then he would permit, he would take the the, uh, the student out of excommunication as well. Mefarish says, Hey, Chidami de Menad What's the case where a person will put himself in Nidoi, Va'ayi lebeisei v'shari leishalom nideo b'fan of, he didn't do it in front of him in this particular case, he would, uh, Marzutra Chasida, put the student into, into Cherem or into Nidoi, he did that not in, in the presence of the student, and therefore he was able to undo the Nidoi, also not in the presence, uh, or undo the Shamta, not in the presence of the, of the student. And the Gemara continues, V'yom Rav Gidol Amar Rav, and Rav Gidol says that Rav says, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, and Davches Amud Aleph.